Understanding and overcoming depression. Now, you know, it's almost hard for me to stand up and say I'm going to preach all weekend on depression because nobody likes the word. And even if we are depressed, we don't want to act like we are or think we are or tell anybody that we are. And so I realize that not everybody suffers day in and day out with depression. But there's not a one of us in this building, including me, <laughs> that's never attacked by it or that's never tempted or that never experiences it. Can everybody at least give me an amen to that? Actually, this week I had something happen and it really hurt me. And when you get hurt, then you get disappointed. When you get disappointed, then you get discouraged. And you know, if, and you know, of course, been there, done that, I'm going out to preach on depression, what else should I expect? And uh, if I wouldn't have known how to handle it and what to do, I could have been in a real mess by the time I got here. So let me just tell you that there's not a person in this building that the enemy won't try to drag into the pit of depression as often as he could possibly get you there. Now, there may be people here who've suffered a lot with depression. There may be people that are in relationship with other people that suffer a lot from depression. But we are going to talk about how we can understand and overcome it and have victory over any degree of it. And I think one of the things that we have to realize is I believe that, that millions of people walk around every day and, and just communicate and fellowship, relate with other people, and they have a low level of depression in their life. They might not be, you know, like, I mean, so bad they're unable to move and can't get out of bed, but I think a lot of people live with a low level sadness, with a heaviness in their spirit, and they're not experiencing the freedom and, and the joy that Jesus died for us to have. Let us not forget tonight, and this is very important to me. The Bible says in John 10, 10, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. He doesn't want us just to live and breathe. He wants us to enjoy our lives. And there's many, many scriptures that tell us that God wants us to have joy. Joy is one of the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. And I think a lot of times when we see the writer of the Psalms, David, say, I will do this or I will do that. I think maybe he was letting us know that it's not always easy and you have to make a decision that you're going to do that. Because anything that's going to benefit you, the devil is going to work overtime trying to steal it from you. Now listen to what I'm going to say. The Bible says in the book of Nehemiah, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And so Jesus said, I came that you might have joy. The devil tries to steal our joy. A lot of times you want to know the truth, he's not even after the stuff you got. He couldn't care less about you losing your car keys or wrecking your car. Or that. He's just after your joy. And he uses whatever he can do to get to you to steal that joy. Because if you're going to be alive today and be a believer in Jesus Christ, the last thing he wants you to do is have any joy. Because if you look like a happy Christian, somebody else might want what you've got. I think it's easier for some people than others. There are some people that are just naturally a little happier than other people. And there are people who, who struggle more than others do. There are people that are just born optimists, and then there are people that are pessimists, and there's a lot of people in between. But to be honest with you, I find in dealing with human beings that, that there's, there's more of the people that tend toward being a little bit deeper and, and sad and a little more negative and a little more easily upset than all of those that just wake up every morning with a giggle in their heart and, you know, just kind of hopscotch through the day and nothing ever bothers them. I've always kind of wished I was one of those people, but I guess it's probably a good thing I'm not because if I was, I couldn't be ministering to many of you because I wouldn't understand what in the world you're going through. So I get it. Amen.
I'm like Pastor Tommy Barnett. Thank God for Starbucks until the anointing kicks in in the mornings. Well, we're going to return to the teaching in a few moments, but I want to take just a little bit of time to address some viewer questions on this topic. How to overcome depression is one of our most frequent prayer requests here at the ministry. And Ginger Stocky's with me today with some of your questions. Well, Ginger, I know you've always got some really good questions for me, so... People ask some good ones. Surprise me, and let's see if we can get a good answer out of me. <laughs> well, that won't be a big <laughs> shock, but let's jump right in with a great question. This comes from Kim, and she says, I have a close family member dealing with some very difficult things in her life that come from her background. Um, she comes from an alcoholic family and is receiving medical care as well as uh, Christian therapy, but still is having a lot of problems and just hasn't gotten the healing. So what resources of yours and scripture, books of the Bible, do you suggest would be helpful for her to study? Well, Kim, first of all, I think when you have a situation like you're describing, it's, we all have to understand that it's probably not going to be something that's just going to get over with real quick. Sounds like this person has had some deep pain for possibly a long, long time. So first, I would really be encouraged, and I would encourage her, if I guess it's a female relative, I'm not sure, to, to see their progress, to see how far they've come, and not just how far they still have to go. I think that's one of the things that we do that really discourages us, is we, we just see how far we still have to go, and we fail to be excited about and even to celebrate our progress. Of course, knowing the Scripture, knowing scriptures even from the psalm where David was very honest with God about the way he felt but then he would like correct himself and say why so downcast on my soul put your hope in God you have to be very careful when a person's feeling depressed that they don't let hopelessness and despair take over you know discouragement is one level but despair is that feeling that there is no way out there is no answer but Jesus said I am the way so even though we don't see the way he still is the way. And then lastly, I would like you to really encourage your relative to begin to confess the Word of God out loud. What we think and what we say very much affects how we feel. I'm going to say that again. What we think and what we say very much affects how we feel. The Bible says if we're ever going to enjoy the good plan that God has for our lives, that we have to completely renew our minds with His Word. That's in Romans 12, too. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the entire renewal of your mind. So we can't think like the world thinks. We have to think the way God thinks. So, for example, I would strongly suggest that this relative say things like, God loves me and he has a good plan for my life. No matter what's happened to me in my past, through Christ, I can overcome it and have a brand new life. I've got a great future in front of me. I also would recommend saying things like, I don't live by my feelings. I know how I feel. I'm not like out of touch with my feelings, but I don't let my feelings rule me. If we will begin to agree with God rather than agreeing with the enemy, we will see our emotions begin to change fairly quickly. Now, I know that's not an all-consuming answer to this problem, but at least it's a few pointers that I think will help your friend along the way. That's excellent. It's very good. And it's, it's very practical, very helpful ways that many of us can either deal with things ourselves or help someone else that we love who's, who's going through the same thing. And, you know, Ginger, I think it's important for me to say that I'm not just uh, theorizing here <laughs> or sermonizing. You know, I'm not just putting some little cutesy statements together that I think would be the right thing to say on TV. I have applied these same principles in my life because... I was abused, I had a bad first marriage, uh, my husband ran around with other women, he ended up going to jail for stealing, I mean, just all kinds of stuff. I mean, when I was in my early 20s, I didn't even know what it was like to feel happy. I mean, I really could not remember ever mm -hmm. feeling happy. And it was, I had, I feel like a million temptations to quit and give up. I'd wake up and feel depressed, so I'd be depressed all day. And I know that it's a battle, but the battle's not ours, it's God's. And the way that we fight our battles with God in the lead is by simply doing what he tells us to do. Mm -hmm. We must learn to think different. We must learn to talk different before we feel different. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 
the first step. Yeah, because if we just keep saying how we feel and saying what we think, then that's what we're going to keep having. But if we will get into agreement with God to confess, the word confess means to say the same thing as. So if we confess the word and say the same thing the word says, there's power in our words yeah. that actually breaks the forces of darkness and lets the light in. You know, the, just as a follow-up question, because I, I think this next question is such a good one that many, many people ask, but Debbie from Pennsylvania is asking, is depression a sin in my life? Well, Debbie, I don't believe that depression is a sin. I think if you cater to it and just go along with your feelings, that it possibly could become sin. I also think that we have to mention that there are different kinds of depression. I do believe that there's a depressed feeling that we can have that's from a chemical imbalance in our bodies that we can do very little about and we need some medical attention. But I think if the depression is caused from a bad attitude, from negative thinking, from dwelling on the past, you know, from even taking on too much in your life and being unrealistic about what you can accomplish. So many people today are depressed and discouraged because they feel like that there's so many expectations put on them but we don't have to meet everybody's expectations. So in that way, I think if I just continue in negative thinking and, and I continue feeling hopeless, and then I could very possibly get into sin. But you know, you can wake up any morning and feel depressed. That doesn't mean that you're in sin. But the, the, the good news is, is that you have the power of God on your side. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And you don't have to live according to your feelings you can manage those emotions. Yeah, there's so much guilt connected, oh, yeah. especially for Christians. I shouldn't well, feel this way. Yeah. We don't even want to tell somebody we have a problem with depression. It's I had true, a little book yeah. out called Help Me, I'm Depressed, and it really didn't sell very much, you know, because people, I think they don't want to go pick that up. We need the truth in it, <laughs> yeah. but we don't want to put a label on, on what we're feeling. Yeah, and, and I understand it. You know, it's yeah. like it, 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 in the world, it, anything with your mind has, has, is, has a stigma attached to it. And, you know, our mind is a part of us just like anything else. We can have problems with our mind, but we can also get our mind renewed and live the life that God wants us to live. Good answers. All you right, did good today. Thank you. <laughs> well, let's get right back to the conclusion of today's teaching, Understanding and Overcoming Depression. All right, stability. Oh, it's so wonderful. Stability. I was not a stable person for a lot of my life. I was moved way too much by my circumstances. If my circumstances were happy, I was happy. If my circumstances weren't happy, then I wasn't happy. My husband, on the other hand, uh, was very stable. And it's, it's very distressing for a really stable person to live with a really not stable person. Because my husband's main desire in life, his, his, the motive of his personality is peace. If you give Dave peace, you can have just about anything else you want, but he wants peace. And so those years when I was up and down and all over the place, I know, had to be difficult for him. It must be really hard for a happy person to live with a depressed person. It's really difficult on everybody around you when you're erratic and emotional and, and easily offended, and touchy, and everything makes you feel sorry for yourself, and it is down, down, and down. And I know we don't like to take responsibility for that stuff. We're like, well, I can't help it. That's just the way I am, and you don't understand what I'm going through. Well, you know, either the Bible is not telling the truth, or we can overcome it, and we can become stable. Now, of course, if you don't want to, you won't. But I'm here to tell you that you can because although I wouldn't stand here and say that I'm 100% stable, I'll tell you what, I am probably somewhere in the 90s and that is a long, 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 long way away from where I started out 32 years ago. It's been a journey and I've had to let God work in me and I've had to let him teach me a lot of things, but I finally got so tired of the ups and downs and I just thought I can't live like this anymore. I've got to have peace, I've got to have stability. Well, something that my husband has said for years and years, and I, I, I don't think I, I really, really, really got it until I'd heard him say it for quite a few years, but 
very often when things would happen that could be upsetting, he would, he would actually look at it and say, I'm not impressed. <laughs> and he told me one time, he said, if you're not impressed, you can't get oppressed. And if you're not oppressed, you can't get depressed. <laughs> and so let's just say, for example, Dave would drop a glass full of iced tea, break the glass, spill the tea all over the place. He might just calmly look at it and say, I'm not impressed. <laughs> and then he'd go about cleaning it up. Well, I want to tell you, when he dropped it, it impressed me. <laughs> what are you doing? Can't you hold on to anything? Now you've broke one of my good glasses. Look at the mess you've made. <laughs> Do I have any sisters out there? <laughs> any brothers? Got a few brothers out there. I, all of you men are not like Dave. I know that. It's probably a good thing Dave and I weren't both alike or we might have killed each other or something, I don't know. But. And so it's so wonderful when you can actually come to that point where you've had enough experience with God that when something like that happens, you, you can take, because you know, we do have like that moment to decide. We do, really. I mean, it's not long, I'll grant you that. <laughs> but you know, if, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, he does remind us, <laughs> and He is our teacher, and so when the Holy Spirit is in us and things like that happen, we have like that just few seconds, few moments of, okay, <laughs> you're at a crossroads here. What are you gonna do, go with what you've learned? Be peaceful, keep the joy, or are you gonna go into another full-blown fit? I mean, have you been around that mountain before? It takes a long time, I think, to get to the point where you're willing to actually make that right choice. But you know, I found out something about God, and most of you probably have too, if you've been trying to serve God for very long. There's, there's one, there's, well, I mean, there's a lot of good things about God, but one of the things about Him is when you're in the school of the Holy Ghost, you never really just flunk out. You just get to keep taking the same tests over and over and over until you pass them. And then even when you think you've passed them all, you get refresher courses. <laughs> you think you got your diploma in that subject, then all of a sudden, you know, when you got your diploma hanging on the wall, here comes a nice new test. Life. Life happens. One day this week, I was a little bit late, trying to get out of the house, had to get to the office, do TV. I was doing TV three days this week. Had to be somewhere else three afternoons this week. Leaving for San Jose on Thursday. Had a packed week. I was getting up every morning at 5.30. Had to be ready to leave by 8.30. Had a lot to do, a lot, of, a lot on my mind. Getting my makeup on. Picked up a bottle of water. Went to drink some of the water. It slipped through my hand. <laughs> fell down in the floor, under my chair, under my dressing table. So I gotta get all the stuff out of the way, get under the chair, clean it up. I just about get it all cleaned up. I picked it up and dropped it again. <laughs> well, I'm happy to be able to say that this time, not every time, but this time, I looked at the bottle. And I said out loud for the devil's benefit, I am not impressed. How many of you think you might want to start trying that? I can just see people all over the world now <laughs> saying, I'm not impressed. You know, it's fun some of the things I get to teach people. I've taught about that silly putting your grocery cart back, you know, to be a person of integrity and not leaving it out in the grocery store parking lot to chase somebody else's car and put dents in it. And so now a lot of people put the grocery carts back. And one lady was, put her groceries in the car one day and she said she started back to the little put your cart away space, rolling her cart. Here comes another lady beside her rolling her cart and they looked at each other and kind of looked back and the one lady finally said, Joyce Meyer, right? And she said, that's right.
you know, stuff happens. I had this stack of paper towels all neatly folded on the sink this afternoon because I need, I need to use a paper towel when I put my contact in. Don't want to get the fuzzy stuff from the towels on my fingers. And I picked the whole, whole not, not nice, folded, you know, maybe 10 of them. Picked every one of them up and dropped them in the sink full of water. I said, I'm not impressed. Now, you know, I know I have to be good this week because I'm teaching you guys this stuff. Spilled coffee not too long ago all over my white blouse and it was a little bit touchy because the last three times I had worn white, I had spilled my coffee on myself. I am not exaggerating. The last three times I wore white, white pants or white blouse, I spilled my coffee on myself. That's one thing to spill coffee on blue jeans. It's another thing to spill it on black or brown, but it's another whole level of not getting impressed when you spill it on white. How many of you are out there? So, and you know, then there's all kinds of big stuff that comes up. Some things it's a little bit harder to not let them impress us, but somehow or another I finally decided, I got it through my head that life is not gonna change. And by that, what I, what I don't mean we're not going to have any changes in our life, but I mean, as long as we're breathing, there's going to be stuff happen. There's going to be people doing things that we don't like and acting in ways we don't like, and there's going to be things happening in the world that we don't like. And, and honestly, I mean, if, if we're going to get all discouraged and, and disappointed and, and devastated and depressed and in a bad mood and lose our peace and feel sorry for ourselves every time that things don't go our way, then we are just in for one miserable, 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 miserable life. So will you at least make a decision tonight that the only way you're ever going to have peace is if you decide to change? Well, you're happy. Not as happy as I'd like you to be, but a little bit happy. A depressed or a discouraged person or a negative person, one of the things that, that they do is they blow things out of proportion. Everything is like, to them, it's a whole lot worse than what it really is. And so if we can keep the things that happen to us that we don't like, if we can keep them in perspective compared to all the wonderful things that happen in our life, and all the good things that we have, and all the good things that people do, and all the good things going on in the world, and all the good things that God has done for us. I mean, really, for any one of us, I mean, how really silly it is to get in, in, in that low of a mood, or a really bad mood, over some isolated thing that happens that disappoints or discourages, and all of a sudden now we throw away a whole lifetime. 